Can you hear me? I took my shit off the charger, so the sound should be good. Yeah, you can hear me? Make sure that you stream, download, buy, whatever the fuck you need to do as it pertains to Barbie World. Um, mm -mm -mm. So, last night was a lot. One second, um, Rockstar. I see your request. Last night was a lot. Today's even more. I would like to give closing remarks. Even on Twitter, they obsessed, bitch. Um, I think that everybody could lay out different reasons why everybody involved, not the mob, was wrong for something they did or said. A lot of people should have just took a deep breath and went and sat down somewhere and went and just enjoyed the night. I think that it was very dark across the board, across the board. I think that um, I understand feeling like you got me fucked up. What did you say to me? I get that. And it's not me. So it's easier for me to be on the outside looking in like, oh, this is what you should have done. I get all of that shit. But at the same time, we are responsible for how we respond to shit. And us alone. So we don't get to when it's time to repent. Say, oh, God, forgive me for what I did because they made me do it. But, you know, I'm sorry. It does not work like that. And so um, everybody just has to be accountable for what they gave to the situation. And I think that a lot of people just would have been better served disconnecting. So I don't think that the health reads were kosher. I don't think that the, uh, you know, uh, sexuality reads were good. I don't think that the skin tone reads, the um, suicide reads, the rape reads. Uh, I don't think any of that shit was good, any of it. I don't think they're telling people how to grieve. It's cool. I don't, none of that shit. I think that. A conversation, and I, I continue to say this, a conversation needs to be fucking had. It is not okay to nail dark-skinned black women to the cross when we could say that Cardi B has done or said something similar or worse, if that's what the core issue is to be. Because we continue to get into these situations where are we are we sitting up here saying that Cardi B can do and say what the fuck she wants to and everybody else better watch their motherfucking mouth for they get a whooping? The AIDS read was not funny. It should have never been said. But uh, Cardi also should never have said, I hope your mother gets AIDS. Okay. Tasha should have never thrown out anything that was received as homophobic. But Cardi also should have never said twink, glitter bottom, and just throw a tranny on them and let them suck their dick. Like they were an object and not a human. And you can say that that shit is old. But if you can go back into your mind and speak on how it made you feel to have a woman use bleach to clean behind you because she felt like you were dirty, if that can trigger you, then why can't what she said be something that's triggering? We don't get to put an expiration date on, on other people's trauma and uh, what people take offense to. Uh, so I think that it's important, you know what I'm saying, to acknowledge these things. Like, and really ask, well, what's the difference? Like I spoke on earlier, you have people who support party that feel like Milagro, I don't like you. Well, why? Well, why? Because you trash Cardi. How I trash Cardi? You talk shit about her all the time. How I talk shit about her all the time. You always talking down on her. What do I be saying? This is what you did. I don't think you should have done it. This is why I think you fucked up at. Bitch, what's wrong with you? That is all I have ever fucking said. If I was wrong, then bitch, I came forward and I said I apologize. Correct or incorrect? Whatever me coming forward and speaking on this did to you and your family, I apologize. I was wrong. No buts. That's what I have done that I made that involved culture. Out of respect and being a real bitch, I think that the little girl is beautiful, but I don't post her. 
just so that nobody feels like I'm being funny because I wouldn't want nobody to do something like that with my kids. So regardless of how beautiful I think the babies are or different moments that I see that I feel like are repost worthy because I have a job to do because I know how I have made people feel, I don't touch it. So I don't understand how you can come as a supposed fan and feel like, well, I don't fuck with you because of what you said. You said this. Okay, well, Cardi was just clinking glasses with Santana. And he outright said this. What does it take? A talk? Okay. Um, if it got to do with, you didn't say, you didn't think she was black. You don't think she could rap. You think Nikki's better. That was said in this space as well. So is it that? Do we do we need to have a talk? Exactly. Okay. It, what, it, what? I was working with Ra. And I did my job. Whatever happened between Ra and Cardi, y'all know damn well I was not there. Y'all know damn well I came into the fold, not in Ra's personal life and not in Nikki's personal life or her business in any capacity. I started doing on site. Y'all know damn well I didn't have no damn dealings with what got posted on the Instagram page. I did Messy Mondays. That's still coming from trending topics what the fuck that had to do with me but when all of that shit happened it was bell callis your sister that's told instagram where we were which was the location of Ra's home where we would film at the time not in her home but in a space um available in the big ass building in the luxurious situation the location where we were filming, Hennessy went on Instagram and said, I know where y'all at. Y'all at the Alexander. We about to come fight, come outside, whatever the fuck she said to that effect. What the fuck I'm supposed to do with that shit? You put me in danger. I was in that room. I was looking at my fucking phone when y'all set up and y'all did that shit. And then turned around and said, well, we not coming over there because it's too many cameras. And y'all wanted people to link up with y'all to fight. Bitch, hello. So listen, I never took my job and tried to make it a personal beef with any fucking body. I did my fucking job and I left it right there. In my mind, you want me to kiss your ass. What would have happened if I would have sat down with Armand and I would have looked at the camera and said, oh, Cardi, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have did this and that. And I think you're great. And blah, 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 fucking blah. Because what the hell, what, what was the point? What the, what the fuck you think I'm finna do? So I just feel like you don't like that one kiss your ass. You made up in your mind however long ago. Whatever you thought I was or what I was doing or whatever the fuck. But I don't know what the fuck you got made up in your mind, bitch. But what I do know is there is not any conversation in my phone between me and anybody while I'm asking them about you. And I'm not talking about in my everyday I'm talking about industry shit. Never has there been a conversation about you. There's a woman from New York who has some business dealings. And this is over a year old. You know, Milagro, we were going in to do this and whoop, 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 whoop. And I came up some type of way. And so the topic comes up and it's this person told me, Oh, that they told them, you support my, my radio? And you, I had done ads for them. Oh, that's going to be an issue. Mm -mm. 
okay? And, you know, people feeling like they don't want to fuck with me because, oh, you supposedly, you don't, you don't fuck with Cardi. Like I mentioned earlier, when the whole thing happened with Fabio Foreign, Star Brim, the one accused Kim Bella of, of trying to give up some pussy. I know y'all remember that bullshit. That whole mess about uh, Kim Bella was trying to give pussy and all that bullshit. And they would start Brim was sitting up there telling Fabio not to come down now. And then fuck went on site. Because her baby daddy not supposed to be friends and whoopty whoopty fucking whoop. Okay, Fabio came down there. Bitch, Rob pulled a knife on Fabio. She didn't know how he was coming. Fabio comes to the fucking interview. And you know Cardi? Who he I think he asked about Cardi. You know, oh, you know Star Brim? So whatever the fuck he asked. Rob pulled out a knife and said, what's up? And he was like, well, you know, me and her, cool, we got history. You know, she said. And that's when, you know, it goes into said what? And that's when we find out. And all this is public. So this ain't no secret. This ain't no behind the scenes tea. This is old shit. You either never heard or forgot about it. So, that's when it come out that Fabio was like, she ain't want me to come down here because, like, oh, y'all the ops. Fabio came back another time. Okay. And Rob was on air and she was like, um, I fuck with you. You know, for coming back and, and fucking around. I fuck with you for that. Okay. That's when, when all that shit was going on, that it came out that Cardi had text star. And was like, she said you lying. And I had, it was the picture, it was a screenshot from on site of my messy Monday in the courtroom. Okay. Then, like I said, fast forward, it was mentioned and I never asked about it. Oh, yeah, I talked to Cardi, you know, about this. Sit down. So, okay. I left it there. So I just feel like everybody try to make it like I have something personal against Cardi. You the one that obviously, you know, feel away or have thoughts or whatever. And that don't have nothing to do with me. Because you don't have to like my commentary. And I said what I said. And I've been saying the same thing. You need to address the different things that you've said. Because I do not feel like you respect women like me. And I have a problem with the things that you have said to women that look like me. And the degre uh, degradation. That's how I feel about that. So, I just, girl, what the fuck do you want me to do? I've already explained what the fuck I don't like. So, what you gonna do? What you gotta say about it? And you never put yourself in a situation to be challenged. Everybody and their motherfucking mama know I'm a roundaway ghetto bitch, but that I have sense. So y'all know damn well I can sit down and talk to somebody and have a conversation. You have never opened yourself up to being challenged. You've never allowed someone to hold you accountable for what you've said. And for you to speak to that. And to me, that's running from it. And you can act like it don't exist. You recently said, oh, y'all going to keep on using the same four things against me. I wonder why. So that's how I feel about that with Cardi. Like, girl, whatever. Um, Tasha, there are no rules in war, but I feel like you took shit too far as well. I really do. And Tasha sent me the Cardi, you know, mix that she did because I had, I, I imagine because I had been um, speaking, you know, and covering the situation. And I just feel like, Tasha, I get the business side and covering it, but I don't understand why you're sending me that DM when you need to apologize for lying on my family. But I do my job. We played the clip. Y'all saw it, whoop the whoop, you know, still covered it, but come on now. 
And at the end of the day, we have to be better to each other. And nobody was good to anybody last night. Now, as it pertains to Armand, um, I don't want to do what I did the last time. What did I do the last time? Armand said that he felt like OG looked like a monkey. And I went on air. I didn't even know, you know what I'm saying? I didn't even know who he was. Um, oh, I'm lying. He had did a read in a, a crown, and I had saw that. And then fast forward, I saw the OG thing. And I did commentary. I said I did not like that and talked about it. And I said, I feel like it's content creators when you have peers. If you have the opportunity to go tell them, like, hey, this is what I thought about this shit, like in a candid way, do that. Because then it turns into a you and them thing. So what I'm not going to do in 2023 is create content out of what Armand said on his platform and what he decided to do. We're not going to act like we didn't see it and we can discuss it to a certain degree, but I'm not going to make, you know, a thing out of it. So with that being said, when I met Armand and through spending time with him based on, you know, being in the late and covering the case, he never made me feel like I was less than as a dark skinned black woman. I think that he was very complimentary, you know, very sweet in that way in terms of, you know, oh, you look good and, and stuff like that. Um, I mean, y'all can call it what y'all want. I'm just going to tell y'all how I felt and what I did not feel. I'm not somebody that needs somebody to buy me a drink or whatever. Like, I got my own money. I can go get my own car, like, whatever the fuck. So I didn't feel like a plus one or a tag along or, you know, I didn't feel. I, he, he never made me feel like less than. I felt like he was encouraging. I felt like he was, um, you know, being positive. And I felt like it was a good vibe. And to say anything else would just be me just saying shit. Because I, I did not feel that. I felt like he was being sweet. And I felt like it, it was a good vibe. So I was being honest when I told y'all that then. And I'm being honest when I'm telling you that now. Um, I wish that last night did not happen because even before he got to the Tasha K piece, I just felt like it had the potential to go wrong because it doesn't matter what Tasha did. Hold on. I got to sneeze. I just sneezed like 50 times. Thank you. Thank you for the blessings. I feel like it ain't going to never matter um, what Tasha said or did. There are things about the world that we don't like, but that's just the way of the world. And I say that to say, all they going to know and see is that a black man got up and he said this, that, and a third. And then they're going to attribute you and your sexuality to why you may have behaved the way you did and then it's going to reinforce certain stigmas therefore nothing about last night was productive everyone in the situation in my opinion cardi armand and tasha fed into the most despicable stereotypes and stigmas about our culture and platformed it and just acted a fool and from the outside looking in, it's, it's like, let's put it to you like this. Never argue with a fool, because from a distance, can't nobody tell which one of y'all is the fool. So it matters not what y'all arguing about or how right you could be. From everybody else's vantage point, look at them clowning. And so it that's what it turned into last night. You know, just some of the ugliest parts of people being put on front street. I don't think that anybody is better than the next. We all have our ways and we've all said or done something that we wish we could take a step back from. I would just hope that we would reflect enough to actually change in practice. And I hate that last night happened because the OG situation happened. And, you know, I just felt like we were so far removed from that. And anybody, you know, being able to take that and say, hey, this is what you said, because through time and action, and being more respectful and whoop de whoop de whoop. Um, you know, people start to feel more comfortable. 
And I think that people were starting to feel more comfortable and had started to feel more comfortable with him. And I think that last night just was so many different steps back. It just took it so many steps back. And I think that it reinforced, you know, the idea in, in a lot of black women's minds. You know what? You do feel like this about me. Because everybody pays attention to what you say on Mad Day. And last night, yesterday, was Mad Day. So, you know, um, a lot of people feel a lot of ways. And I just feel like, you know, I hate that it happened. Um, and we just have to remember that we have to be accountable for our actions, no matter what anybody else did. And, you know, one minute they love you and they cheering for it. And it's the same thing. Then they go back and think about it a little bit. They read a couple of comments. They listen to some commentary. And then they come back and they say, you know what? No, this is how I feel. Finicky. People are finicky. They said Tasha K is online saying that she has admitted herself into anger management. Bitch, hello. People, let's go take a look. The shenanigans apparently never fucking stop. So this is still a joke, I guess. Is this on her story or her Twitter? Hold on. Three days ago, eight minutes ago. Eight minutes ago, somebody posted Tasha K uh, on Twitter and Instagram all day yesterday, and it's a fight. From the desk of Tasha K. Oh, this is somebody else's words. Hold on. From the desk of Tasha K. She wants to sincerely apologize for her less than professional actions on Beyonce's internet yesterday. This is not the example the winos need. So we even rolled Tasha Kay into one of Florida's top anger management programs to deal with issues that she faces on social media. Please note, this could be you. Social media is a hard landscape to navigate, and given all the recent headlines, Tasha Kay was bound to snap. And for that unwind with Tasha Kay and its affiliates, we apologize sincerely for her treacherous, uh, treacherous behavior. She sincerely didn't mean to burn the vineyard down. With that said, her team will continue to post on her behalf for the next seven days, while she completes her anger management program, keep her and her family in your prayers. Remember, no one is perfect. Bondi Blue will toast with y'all until Tasha K returns to social media. Hashtag Wino Nation, stream Barbie World. You know what? This is absolutely fucking ridiculous and ludicrous, and this is what I'm talking about. This is exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Playing all goddamn day. And, you know, all this performative shit. Can you, can everybody get serious for one fucking minute, please? And bitch, you know I don't never stop playing, but goddamn. So, I see right through this. In my opinion, this is a situation where this going to be turned into Armand said, and oh, what was me? Tasha K comes up the next morning apologetic. And she's going to anger management to deal with her problems. Come on now. Don't you see right through this shit? You don't see what she's doing. So, so anyway. What I'm not going to do is get on social media and bash our mind. Whatever I need to say about how I felt about his commentary. I'm going to do what I did not do, whatever year that was. And I will let him know that. Um, in terms of my name not being mentioned and people asking me why you wasn't mentioned. In all honesty, I feel like I was not mentioned in the list. Some people feel like, well, he considers you a sister, not an internet person. I feel like my name wasn't said because Cardi B, it, it was in the atmosphere in terms of being the topic of discussion, in terms of quite possibly listening, in terms of just all of that. 
But at the end of the day, I don't feel like it's an issue that I wasn't mentioned because, you know, you didn't even have to think about me in the midst of what was going on. And that's not a negative to me because I wish the shit never even happened. So I don't want to be attached to it anyway. So that's not something to sit up and go start a fucking uh, rally about or start a petition. So um, that's just that on that in terms of that. Yesterday I tweeted something. And I said it would have served, you know, a lot of people a lot better to just shut the fuck up. And had everybody just read that tweet, digested it, bookmarked it, and went and sat the fuck down some damn well. Bitch, we would not be here right now. Little baby said, you can admit that it hurts because you've been in spaces with him and thought y'all had a friendship. I don't like for people to try to Because I'm very expressive, I'm very honest, and very open. There's nothing for me to admit because I'm not hurt. When I comment and I say, he didn't make me feel like this or that. And then say, okay, well, my name wasn't said. I feel like this is the reason. That's me telling you. I don't feel like it's a. I don't feel like you don't like me. I don't feel like it got anything to do with me and you. I know it don't have nothing to do with me and you. I feel like when you do this job, and you know you have certain connections. Unfortunately, there comes a time where, you know, it gets sticky. And, you know, in politics. And that's what I feel. I, I don't feel like you got nothing to do with you not liking me. You like me. I know you do. But, you know, here goes the situation in here. So I feel like that's what that should be when it, when it comes to shit like that. Oh, Neil said he eating boiled eggs. And I'm trying to figure out how you afforded them. Where's my fucking money? So I think that everybody needs to just remember. Don't nobody be caring about them details. You know, you have the mob. We're critical thinkers. The world are full of sheep. People see something, even if they see it, half-ass paying attention. Somebody tell them something, they got it ass backwards. They don't be paying attention to that shit. So they just see the hooping and hollering. They see the mess. They take the mess from it and just run with it. So regardless of what your intentions could have, you know, could have been. It's the same way my clips or my audio has gotten clipped and people were able to receive it how they wanted to because of that piece. And that's why you just have to be careful and aware. And that is why I had to put my phone down, you know, um, within the past two weeks when shit was going on, you know, with the case and Kelsey was coming out the woodwork and, you know, it was just like, you know what? Mm -mm. You know, so sometimes you just have to take a step back. And what I won't allow, first of all, I don't go and watch anybody that's sitting up talking down on me. So don't feel don't feel the need to send me anything when these people, and they will do it, put me in their headlines and say, Armand, don't fuck with Mob Radio and um, I knew this would happen. Or whatever the fuck they're going to say, who fucking knows? I don't care. And hoes don't put batteries in my back. So I don't give a fuck about what they're going to say. At all. At all. So, um. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit. 
So 